What is going on guys? Colton here with Twig and Timber Outdoors and Lucky Tackle Box. Here with another fly tying quick and easy nymph for you guys here. Uh, this does a really good job at staying out of the way, not getting hung up on the rocky bottom. So we're going to be tying it on what we call a jig hook. Now there are slotted beads that are designed specifically for them, but I'm going to show you the easy way that when you don't have all these uh, specialized gear because again we've seen these uh, these jig hooks come in like tackle boxes before especially on certain euro style nymph uh, what we call point flies uh, so what we have here is a size 10 jig hook uh, it is what do you um, debarbed if you will so it's a barbless hook and I'm going to be starting with Danaville's uh, 140 you can tie it in 70 as well uh, denier uh, brown and so first, uh, what we're going to be doing is, before we do anything, I like to take some lead-free wire, and we're going to throw a few, two, three, we're going to go four, okay, and if you, if you need, you can grab some hackle pliers, or sometimes you can just, with your fingers, uh, helicopter it off, and... Or you can take handy hemos or forceps and usually bend it right off. And we're just gonna make sure it wraps itself around. Do the same thing here. Now you can usually helicopter it off, but if you wanna be precise with how many wraps per, sometimes I like to just be precise and use some hemostats or forceps. And there are ways you can slide it in and glue it down, but again, if you don't have special stuff, you're going to have to, you can again use your forceps here to mash down the wrap and finish its wrap. Okay, we're going to push it all the way to the front and smush it a bit with your forcep. Now it might not look super clean now, but all of that gets very gets covered here in a second. So we're gonna take our brown thread, we're gonna start it on our hook here. And I like to try and sometimes incorporate the what do you call it? The lead wrap here, or lead free wire rather. Snip off our excess. Make sure this stays nice and forward. As forward as we can get it. And we're going to wrap it in. Build a nice thread base behind the weighted wrap. Okay. All right. So there are a couple different types of materials we can use for this. Uh, you can go right ahead and use the dubbing we're going to use later and to create like a little fluffy tail. You can use... Um, uh, soft tackle. You can use uh, pheasant tail, turkey tail. I have just a little bit of pheasant tail here. In fact, this is synthetic pheasant tail. I'm going to grab about mm, anywhere from 6 to 10 of the of the fibers. I'm going to snip off the wispy back ends. Doesn't matter if it's super delicate or not. I'm gonna try my best to keep them as even as I can. Now your tail on these is gonna be a little shorter than your tail on normal nymphs. Normally you'd you know you'd measure based on the hook shank, but I like to take about half the hook shank from the bead, the back of the bead to about the body and transfer it. And if you do a loose wrap, followed by another loose wrap, don't cinch it down, you're able to modify how much is exposed on the back side of the hook. And so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to throw my anchor wraps in all the way to the bend of the hook on the top. Yeah, there we go. And you can now, if you'd like to, you can cut the excess, but what I like to do, 
just to provide a little extra cover from or over these wraps here is I like to take the extra butt end here and what I'll do is either grab them in a plunger style heckle, heckle plier or just a heckle plier or these are long enough to get where I can do it with my fingers and wrap these over the body of the nymph. Then I'll use my thread to capture it, snip that up close. Not the prettiest job, but again, that's an, an additional step if you don't, you know, if you're not really into wasting material. I'll then take some fine brass or copper wire. You'll need about uh, three inches or so of it, so I like to pre-snip mine. It just makes it easier to manage. And I'll tie it in from the base of the, it'll butt up to rather, the base of the weighted wrap. And you'll see me constantly go over the whole thing because this is a fly that is going to be bounced off the bottom frequently. And I kind of want to make sure that it holds up. Now, this is where you can get creative with things. I personally like to keep mine pretty muted in color because I am going to give a hot spot on the end later. So what I'll do for this one, you can use either natural color, uh, like hair's uh, mask, or you can use like a brown. I like to kind of mix it up, but what we'll do today is we'll keep ours pretty muted and we'll do a nice, just a olivey brown drab bit of dubbing. I like to wet my fingers. If you have wax, now's a good time. And create a fine dubbing noodle. You don't want to overdub these because you want them to sink. You want them to get really down there. I'm going to keep doing it. Keep putting it on there. Short little strips here. You want to build kind of like a little taper. Make sure that looks okay. Yeah, it's not bad. Okay. This is a super simple fly that I make sure can handle a bunch of abuse. This is. Um, typically, in my rigs, fish as a point fly, meaning that it bounces off the bottom quite a bit. So, the more, and what typically, the more material you have that bounces off the bottom, the more you lose it. Not lose the fly itself, but you lose the material. And I'm going to dub this all the way up to... the back of the bead here. Doing it in shorter spurts is more tedious, it takes a little longer, but I can really get a fine noodle. And I want that taper. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a bit of a taper because we're not going to be adding anything extra to the fly. I like to make sure that, throw a couple of half hitches in here, I like to make sure that it, it can stand on its own as far as the shape and everything of the fly goes. Okay, so I wrapped forward, now I'm going to use, I'm going to counter wrap with my wire here. Just open spiral wraps. Trying to keep this pretty simple, just to segment the body. Now, use my thread to capture some good anchoring wraps here. 
and you can spiral, spiral it off, but I'm pretty sure my vise is going to move if I do that because I don't have it anchored down to the, um, what do you call it, to the, to the desk for our demonstration table here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some orange, some bright orange thread. It could be any size really because the fly is essentially done. Uh, this just happens to be waxed 140. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie in this orange. And I'm just going to do this. Boom. I'm going to throw one half hitch in here. What I do is a little excessive, but again, I really want to make sure that this is a tough fly. To try make sure you don't snip off your new thread. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put just a couple wraps in. And I'm going to take my um, whip finish tool and I'm going to generously apply whip finishes to the head here, especially on the, jeez, oh, keep moving this, trying to create just a nice little hot spot, and I will get you guys back in focus here. Okay, now essentially your fly is done. The only thing that I would suggest is after you snip off really closely your orange thread, and you apply some hardener of some kind, you take some kind of dubbing brush or Velcro, and you work up the abdomen a bit. Nothing crazy, you don't want to go too big. But you want it to be a little buggy. Remember, if you do it too much and you make it too bulky, then it becomes less sinkable, if you will. And anything you go too far with, or too crazy with, take a pair of scissors and you maintain a little more here. And there you have it. That is one of my favorite simple Euro style nymphs. It's taken quite an inspiration. I try and simplify everything from, you know, work that Egan, Lance Egan's done, because obviously he and Derek do a wonderful job at Eurofi Eurofying, if you will, our American style fishing. But there you have it. That's a really simple and easy Euro style fly that can be worked in as a point fly just by adding a little more weight and it will, it will fish upside down like this. Um, just like the others will, even without a slotted bead. Hopefully you guys liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Check out the other videos in the playlists. The other how-tos and instructionals. And until next time, guys, catch you guys on the flip side. Tight lines, and we're out.